Past picks from David Burroughs, a barometer from April 5th, 2012. You're up a combined 7.7 percent. The the one that's been the fly in the ointment here is clearly Intel, down 20 percent. Uh, but I see here you don't actually own it anymore. No, we we wound up getting stopped out of that last summer as we went into the European crisis. All of the tech stocks basically got taken out of the portfolio. You know, great dividend yield that ultimately people are not willing to pay for for industries right now that are economically sensitive and clearly semiconductors are a big one uh, and uh, so we've chosen more to focus in the yield camp. Time now for the top picks. Top picks is brought to you by Questray where you can trade stocks for four ninety five. Top pick number one from David Burroughs, president of Barometer Capital Management is Kiera. 3.7% dividend yield, is that one of the big reasons why you're recommending it today? Monetary policy is pushing people to do something with cash to generate a return. We know that in dividend investing where you make your money is buying something that has a sustainable yield but one that will grow. There is a shortage of midstream energy infrastructure today to support this boom in oil and gas production. Uh, so those that have a footprint have an opportunity to grow revenue and grow their margins. So Kiera is midstream energy infrastructure largely for liquid natural gas, liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, they have volume growth, they are raising their prices, they are doing well with their marketing businesses, and we think you're going to get 10 to 20 percent cash flow growth over the next five years. So if you can get close to a 5 percent dividend, 4.5% four, four, uh, four dividend plus say 10% dividend growth a year for the next five years, that's worth a higher multiple than it's trading at today. Well, what about the stock value? Because at 57 and change, the consensus, it's already pretty fairly valued here. People are valuing midstream energy companies based on what they looked at over the past 10 years. We have gone through a significant shift where volume growth has accelerated and their pricing power is improving. So the entire midstream energy group is being revalued to a higher multiple and we think people are underestimating the strength of the franchise these companies have when you see how difficult it is to get new infrastructure uh, 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 past legislation and past the environmental concerns. Those that have it today have a big advantage. Top pick number two with a plague sweeping through BNN. I'm happy to see Merck is one of the picks. Why? <laughs> So Pharma, one of the strongest performing groups after many years of underperforming. Uh, let's do a very simple comparison. Merck has an earnings yield in the business of just over 8%. A treasury bond yield is at 1.7%. The market has assessed the risk of default in Merck as being less than a U.S. treasury bond because it costs less to insure against default than a treasury bond. Yet you're going to probably see 8 to 9% cash flow growth for the next five years. So if you can get, again, close to a 5% dividend yield with a margin of safety, they're not paying out a high percentage of their earnings, mm -hmm. and they're going to get dividend growth of 5 to 6%, this is what investors are looking for in an environment which is still economically somewhat fragile. Well, what is the risk to this investment thesis on Mark? Well, the big risk had been, over the last number of years, the patent cliff, of course. But we spent years looking at which, com which drugs were going to come off patent, and these businesses have become distribution businesses. So we think very good return with a risk characteristic people can live with. Top pick number three, we were discussing whether or not you like Shoppers Drug Mart. You said you prefer Walgreen instead. Why? Our focus is investing in companies that are good getting better, where there's a catalyst. We talked about catalysts. Mm -hmm. So Walgreens bought 50% of Boots. So Walgreens is going to grow their cash flow from $3 billion to $6 billion a year by 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. They've grown their dividend 24% a year over the last five years. So you get a 2.2, 2.3% dividend. You should expect, we believe, 15 to 20% dividend growth going forward. They are growing their, their market. There's a, an additional 30 million people that will become customers as the Obama health care plan goes into, into being. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got synergies to garner from the Boots uh, acquisition. Uh, and the combination of dividend growth and cash flow growth, again, makes it very attractive, as opposed to, in Canada, uh, shoppers that's had it very well, but is facing increasing headwinds. Well, as far as the, the value here, much like one of your other picks, the consensus here is that Walgreens is already fully valued. We're trading uh, WAG in New York is, well, for example, Shoppers is 15 times. They're 19 times current earnings, 14 times forward earnings at the WAG. Right. CVS, Rite Aid, they're all in that same band. Here's, here's a very simple thing to take away. We've spent 20 years looking for revaluation <clears throat> themes in the market. 
when you find a real revaluation or a multiple expansion story, mm -hmm. very often from 30% of the way through the process, there's an army of smart people prepared to tell you why it's over. Right. And you stick with what's working as long as it's working. This is exactly what investors are looking for in this market. Then let's end on exactly that issue. Um, you pointed out that with Intel, you were stopped out. Yes. Good idea. Talk about exit strategies here. Yes. How do you establish your stop loss positions to ensure that your downside is minimized? Right. So we obviously do our fundamental work to identify where we think value is. We like to see price behavior that supports the view. If price behavior in a security starts to perform differently than we would expect, we want to be able to say, we may miss something here, we want to make an exit. So we use point and figure charts to try and identify inflection points in the trading behavior that would highlight something's changing. There's lots of ways you can do that. I think the most important thing is to have some discipline around your cell, because where people make their big mistakes is they hold on to their losers and they sell their winners and they don't wind up making any money. So stop losses, hard stops, as, hard, as opposed hard to... Hard stops, and we, we look for, at each security level, inflection points where the price behavior is changing, and it's, it's hard to explain more. Yeah, than there's that. no magic number for you. No, we, well, we use point and figure charts to identify them. David, great having you with us. Thank you again. Thanks very much, Michael. Uh, David Burroughs is the president of Barometer Capital Management. That's it for this edition of Market Call. If you missed any part of the program, bnn.ca will have the replay for you. And, of course, you can catch the program Encore three, uh, Tuesdays through Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, and Market Call live tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. As always, please consult a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. I'm Michael Hainsworth. Follow me on Twitter for guest picks, breaking news, and behind the scenes here at BNN. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll be with us next time.